time for movie buzz. It is time for movie buzz. Tell your mom, your sister, and your cousin it's time for movie buzz. Here comes your host, Zach, carrying a six pack. Come on over, enjoy the fun. It's time for movie buzz. Yeah, come on over, enjoy the fun. It's time for movie. Yes, it is. It is time for the Movie Buzz podcast, and I am your host, Zach. Welcome to the show. We are going to interview Theodore Ted Melfi of St. Vincent, the new movie starring Bill Murray and Melissa McCarthy. He is writer, director, and producer of the movie, and he will be joining us shortly. So we'll start with the the review, is what we're going to call it. <laughs> but, yes, I went to... See St. Vincent yesterday. It was pretty. It's pretty interesting experience slash movie. Uh, not the experience really. I mean, I just went to see a movie. I did have a revelation on the way there, though. The day before, we had recorded an episode featuring the movie Waking Life, and I came to some sort of realization that I'm like living, living a mem. Uh, my life is like a living memoir, or like I guess this. This podcast is more like a living memoir. Uh, I've always felt like, since I was young, younger, probably not like super young, like 10 or something, but, you know, teenage years, I've always kind of felt about myself that I will not make it to 50. And now I'm thinking I might not even make it to like 45. It keeps <laughs> going down there, but this is like my living memoir, sort of, because I don't, I won't be... My feeling is I won't be around later in life to release something. Um, not that people would even want to read what I had to release, but, you know. I feel like on the show, I'm you know I share stories about doing cocaine in West Hollywood during Pride Weekend and eating mushrooms with my friends and things like that. And that's normally something that it seems like down the line people will talk about. You know, 20 years after the fact, 10 years after the fact, on the road to recovery sort of thing. Not that I need some kind of recovery or intervention, but I'm just I'm just trying to make a point here. The point is, I feel like this podcast is allowing me to reflect on things more properly because it's more of an immediate reflection instead of twenty years down the line or something. So I guess <laughs> I guess that's what uh that's what you have to look forward to here on every episode of Movie Buzzed. But back to the point of the episode, I went to see St. Vincent by myself after having this revelation. And I get in the theater, and it's kind of like, you know, sparse. But I had like a perfect... I mean, when you go to the movie on a Wednesday afternoon, chances are you're probably going to be one of the few people sitting there. But I was surprised, actually. At, usually it's just me and someone else or me and another couple or something like that, but there was a legitimate amount of people for like a Wednesday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, a good 20, 30 people. But I got my own seat, not next to anybody, which is nice, and it was like one of those things where you feel like you're sitting in the balcony, sort of, like it's right over the entryway, and there's like a little partition in front of me, so I kind of got like this little individual area, and I think it was actually pretty good, because during the movie, like most of the movie, I'd be sitting there like laughing to myself, or like, you know, giggling out loud, such a, <laughs> yeah, that's what I do, I'm like, I'm just giggling, but I, like, I really, I reacted like, it was, I don't, I, I assume I, I reacted the proper way, you know, it's like a, it's a comedy drama, a dramedy, if you will, and, uh, I mean, they're making light of things like, uh, stroke, and death, and things like that, you know, it's all very, it's all framed in a very serious way, but the way the people, the way the characters react to situations of, like, strife and heartache is to kind of have, like, a... Well, specifically Bill Murray's character, you know, he's just kind of like an asshole, pretty much. So you can't help but laugh at this guy's reaction to, like, having a stroke. You know, they're like, you know, say the word dog or something. He's, like, flipping them off. And they're like, no, that's not quite it. You know, so he flips them off with his other finger. And that's not, <laughs> that's not it either. But I would be, like, laughing at these things. You know, this guy going through physical therapy, which is not funny in and of itself, but the way, the way he was, like, acting in this therapy just made you laugh. And it was weird because, like, in the theater, 
I was probably like 10 to 15 years younger than anybody else in the mm. theater. So when like the, the, the death and stroke stuff would come up and it was like kind of serious, but the characters were re- reacting to it in like a humorous way, I would be like, <laughs> you know, just laughing. It would be like dead silent otherwise. And I kind of, <laughs> I've, I had the feeling m- more than once that I was like, maybe I should just kind of rein it in a little bit and not enjoy myself so much. But fuck that. Fuck that. And fuck the moviegoers who will not allow me to express myself. Well, I mean, no one really stopped me from expressing myself. I did it. I expressed. And I'm, I left satisfied. But to, more to the point of the movie, I honestly would suggest, you know, not because I'm having the director on or anything like that, but independently of that, I would suggest that people go and see this movie. It's getting a little bit, I mean, it's kind of early, but this is when the time happens for the uh, Oscar buzz and shit of that elk. Golden Globes, Emmys, etc., etc. And they're talking about, you know, this being a potential for... They're talking about this being a potential for a potential for Bill Murray to win a Golden Globe Award, which is awesome. This is definitely a movie that has... A, performances, and B, like, cinematography and scripting and everything else that kind of lends itself to an Academy Award-type movie. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of bittersweetness in it. A lot of bittersweetness. <laughs> I love making up terms, but yeah, yeah. So, I would suggest, like I said, everyone... If you're a fan of movies, go see this. If you're a fan of Bill Murray, go see this. See, that's the the big appeal is like seeing Bill Murray do his thing. And I was talking to Andy Milder the other day of Weeds fame, and he was talking about how like Jack Nicholson, you know, there are character actors and then there are actors like Jack Nicholson, where it's like this role, like what Jack brings to this role is himself. Like I said, The Shining or something like that. You know, it's just, yes, he's playing a character, but this is like, intense, like, weird, kind of creepy Jack Nicholson. You get that, like, a lot with Bill Murray movies, too, you know? He doesn't necessarily get, like, lost in the character. You're just, uh, you kind of recognize, hey, this is Bill Murray, and he's, you know, he's portraying this character or something. You can't, like, disassociate the two. It's kind of like that in this movie, like, in the beginning, I would say, but as it, like, progresses, it's it's sort of a different role than uh, Bill Murray's taken on. You know, he's usually, like, even though he's always, like, sarcastic and kind of, like, an asshole sometimes, he's not really... It's, like, out of uh seems like it's more, like, out of a, a loving place. I mean, he's, like, you know, he doesn't relate to people, really. He doesn't really relate to people, and it's kind of his own doing. Like, he can't get out of his own damn way, like, most of the movie. That's enough of my review of this movie, St. Vincent. I think we're going to get Ted Melfi on the line and... And we're going to get some of his experiences with the film because from what I gather, he was a part of it, you know, from its inception. He was a writer. He was also the director so and the producer. So I think this film is like his vision, I would say, mostly. So we're going to see what he has to say about that. On the Team Procreate guest line, director, producer, and writer Ted Milfi. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being on. I really appreciate it. This is... Um, this is a big surprise, so I'm glad to have you on the show. So, from what I understand, you were pretty much a part of this project from the inception. Uh, you were the director, the writer, and the producer. I'm just curious how you got the film going in terms of like funding and casting, and just the overall process of, of it being greenlit. Well, um, you know, I, I wrote the film three years ago, and I was going to make it with a couple friends of mine mm-hmm. for 800 grand. So I had two friends. Each one had 400 grand, and we were going to go make this little movie. And then I wrote the script pretty quickly, and I, I, um, I got it to my, my agents called me and said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to do this movie. And they said, okay, can you send us the script? I said, sure. So I sent them the script on a Friday. On Monday, they called me and go, you're not making this movie for 800 grand. <laughs> and I said, I said, why not? I said, well, it's, it's fantastic. I said, yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. You know, I thought it was another, you know, another Hollywood hand job. And I said, um, if I had a nickel for every uh, time you said that, I'd be able to make another movie. <laughs> so I said, I, I said, you know what? I'll give you two weeks. 
you can do what you want within two weeks. If, if, at, if at the end of the two weeks you haven't gotten anything to happen, I'm I'm going and taking my Instagram and going and making the move. Mm-hmm. Within two weeks, uh, everyone, you know, they gave it to three or four producers, one of them being Peter Chernin in General Topic. And, you know, Peter used to be kind of Fox. Um, he's about as big as it gets. You know, and I, I, didn't know, I don't know shit. I didn't know who the hell he was at all. <laughs> um, and I, so I look up and they say, Peter Chernin likes the script and J.J. Abrams wants to talk to you. So within that two weeks, everything kind of went haywire. And I... Uh, so I look up Peter Turner and I'm like, holy shit, but this guy's like Peter Turner. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sitting at home on a Saturday and my phone rings, my cell phone rings. And I pick it up and I go, hello, and he goes, Peter Turner. And I go, Peter Turner, Peter Turner? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> hello. He goes, look, I, 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 yeah, I go, I go, that's pretty amazing. He goes, well, I, uh, I read your script. I, I made me laugh and made me cry. And I just, like, you got you to gotta allow me to produce it for you and work with you on it. You have to allow me to help make it for you. And I said, okay, well, let's sit down and talk about it. And that started the whole producing of it. They they basically shepherded it around town and mm-hmm. you know got it to got it to the right places and for finance financial you know for the for the fund it. And next thing you know, we were at Fox, and then we were at Fox Searchlight, and then in between that, I got I found and tracked down Bill Murray, and he said yes. And Jeez. then it just kind of all just went, you know, once Bill said yes, it just kind of fell into place really rather quickly. Right. You get Bill Murray on the film, I'm sure. <laughs> that opens a lot of doors in and of itself. Well, just getting Bill Murray on the phone is a movie in and of itself. Oh, yeah. So, Jesus. Yeah. Well, on IMDb, it's it, some, like, weird trivia about you meeting him in an airport and in an out burger. Yeah. Yeah, he told me to meet him at LAX <laughs> on Sunday morning. In baggage claim, and I met him in baggage claim at LAX. And uh, the next thing you know, we were driving in a town car oh. for three hours. God. To we ended up we ended up in Temecula. We ended up at the Pachanga Indian Reservation. <laughs> it's, it's in the middle of nowhere in like San Diego, and um, yeah, it was just it was. It's, I, I, you know, every meeting I've had with Bill, every major meeting I've had with Bill Murray has been in an airport. Nice. That sounds. That sounds pretty fitting, actually. <laughs> he does not like to waste a lot of time. So yeah. if he's traveling and he can take a meeting at the same time, he does it. Very cool. Well, I'm also interested in, like, um, I love Chris O'Dowd was awesome in the movie, and uh, Melissa McCarthy was great. I mean, it's like a role she wouldn't normally play. Like, she's kind of utilized in, like, a more silly type of way. I was just curious how you got uh, how you got them involved as well. I love Chris O'Dowd. I'm so glad you you, oh. you like him because so few people know him. Man, he was awesome in that movie. He's I awesome. I mean, he just he, he makes the whole. He he's one of the things that makes the movie for me. Right, he's just like so endearing. He's like sarcastic with these kids, but he's just like so endearing with them, and I mean, it's just he's a great he's a great actor. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, he's in it, he's in it for such a short amount of time, and you know that that part could have been just a throwaway. He really made it like have a real value. Um, oh yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris and I had the same agent, so that was a very simple. That was a much simpler process. That's easy, yeah. His, his agent, his agent, my his agent was a big fan of the of the script, um, and so you know she got it to him right away. He said yes immediately. That was a very easy process just because we shared the agent. Melissa was my first choice, and I said Melissa McCarthy mm-hmm. for the role of Maggie. Everyone, you know, general topping. One of the producers said. That that's kind of that's kind of brilliant. I said I think so, right? She goes, yeah. And then we told Harvey Weinstein. He goes, no, absolutely not, no way. He goes, she's a she's a broad comedian. You can't, mm-hmm. you know, this is like this is a drama. And uh, I think that's a misconception with the film. The film itself is a drama. But, you know, people laugh because it's Bill Murray, but it's really a dramatic movie. And so and so. Uh, I, I had a meeting with Melissa and I told her, you know, I, she's like, I, I want to, I really want to do this. I said, okay. I mean, I've, I've, I've swore to you to do this. And so I tell Harvey, I bet she's the right person. He's like, no, absolutely not. And he said, I said, well, what if I can get her to audition? He goes, well, if you get her to audition, you know, we'll look at it. And so I call her up, say, Melissa, who the hell am I to ask you this? But <laughs> I, I, I really believe in you for this part, but would you, would you ever in, in, in any world consider auditioning for this part? And she said, hell yeah. And uh, wow. she said, that's your CK, yeah. But, <laughs> uh, and so uh, 
we put her on tape on a Friday. I filmed her in a friend of mine's office and put her on tape on a Friday. Sent it to Harvey on uh, Friday night. On Monday morning, my phone rings, and Harvey goes, okay, I, I, I don't say this often, and you probably won't hear me say it again, <laughs> but you were right, and I was wrong. Nice. That's probably a rare Harvey Weinstein story right there. <laughs> Very rare. He goes, I, he goes and, and I can't think of anyone else now, and she's, she's a revelation. Yeah, she was wonderful. And, yeah, so, so that's how Melissa came on board, is because just just you have to fight. You know, filmmaking is a series of, of small battles that end up in a, in a war, a war being the end result of the movie, whether you won the war or not, whether the movie is, you know, is good. Not. And then, uh, and so all the battles you fight along the way add up. So those are the battles. I fought. At one point, I had to fight for Bill Murray. At one point, I had to fight for Melissa McCarthy. Harvey fought for Naomi Watts. I fought really hard for the kid. They didn't want the kid, but they wanted this other kid. God, Jaden was awesome in that movie. Holy crap! <laughs> I know, but they wanted they wanted another kid. They were like, "This is the other kid. That's the other kid." And the other kid had just done a movie for them, so they felt comfortable. Oh right. Okay. And I had to fight and fight and fight and fight and said, look, at some point, at some point, the high guys have to trust me over and we're, we're uh, uh, why are we in business together? Yeah, no, that that kid blew my mind. I mean, he is, he's awesome. He is really good. Yeah, without that kid, you have no movie. I mean, the, the other kid would have ruined the movie and the other kid was good. <laughs> he, was, he was not, he was not Jaden. He's the other main character, I would say. Bill Murray is probably like the main character. And this kid, I mean, they just they just carry scenes together. You know, he holds his own with some pretty heavyweight actors. Yeah, he's he's the kid's so amazing. He's so calm and he's peaceful and he's he's just a normal human being. He's a kid. He's not an actor. He's not an actor. Actor. He's not a, not a cutesy or precocious. He's just a kid. I like the he's he's very polite. <laughs> yeah. <true>. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question actually about like, I guess the a technical aspect of the film, but as I was watching it. I noticed that a lot of the shots were, they were like medium to close up shots. And I was just curious about your decision to shoot it like that. Cause it, it, like, like I said to you earlier, it kind of forced me to focus on the scene at hand. Well, you know, if you rewatch the film, you'll discover um, there's an awful lot of wide shots too, really wide ones, but they're very, very, they're used very, for very short periods of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Seconds. And then when you're dealing with a performance piece, because ultimately, St. Vincent is a performance movie, ultimately. Uh, ultimately, it's about these actors, and these characters, and how they feel about the world. And so if you're not in on them, uh, and, and if you can't see them, you know, you have no sense of, you have no sense of where you are, what, what, how they feel, what their faces look like. And, you know, when we did our first close-up of Bill Murray, I said to myself, we could just shoot the whole movie close up with right. him. <laughs> his face, you know, you look at his face. You look at his face in that in that opening scene in the bank, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, when he's dead telling the lady he wants to close his account. And you say to yourself, God, look at that face. He has every single human emotion in those sad, soulful eyes that one could ever possibly have. And how could you how could you put the camera in a position where you can't see that? So that's that's kind of what happened. We have a lot of wide shots that actually we cut out of the movie because you know, we just said we can't leave Bill. I loved it. No, I I really enjoyed the way it was shot. I like that it was like kind of tight. I mean, like you said, the movie's carried by the characters, so to keep them, you know, as the focus in the frame is pretty. I liked it. Forced me. Yeah. I'm a pretty ADHD person, so it forced my attention. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so you're yeah, welcome. Well, I had a question about Bill Murray, We're talking about the man himself, specifically the very last scene. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. I've already suggested that everyone go see this movie, but did you just kind of like let him do his thing, or did you have in mind what was happening there, or were you just like, here's a garden hose and uh, you know Bob Dylan, have at it? Well, it started with, you know, I was stuck on what to do with the ending, and I said, I just want the ending to be something simple. I just want it to be something simple that shows uh, the audience that life goes on in a, in a very, like it always does, in a very normal, simple way. You know, you break your leg, and the next day you still got to go to work, really, mm-hmm. right? So just how it works in life. So um, 
I asked Bill, I said, Bill, what if he just sang a song? I go, I go, end credits are so like, you know, we could have ended the movie at the dinner table and called it a day and it would have been fine. But, you know, there's something about Bill that I said to Bill. I said, Bill, I want to prove that we could watch you read the phone book. <laughs> and he goes, okay, he goes, okay, what do you mean by that? I go, well, like over the end credits, you're going to read the phone book. He goes, okay. I go, and that phone book is going to be, you know, you with your Walkman that you had all the time, singing a song, and just fussing around your, your yard. And, and, and he goes, okay, what song? And I said, well, I, I really love Shelter from the Storm. I think it kind of sums up mm -hmm. the, the point of the movie. And he goes, because that's one of my favorite songs. Perfect. And I said, okay, well, there you have it. So we gave him a Walkman. I said, I'm going to give you a dead plant. I'm going to give you um, a hose. And I'm going to hide your cigarettes. <laughs> and in the dead plant. And I go, that's all I'm going to do. And you rest is on you. That's awesome. And he just, uh, yeah, he just, so it's kind of, I would say it's 50 50. Yeah. He, you know, but but you know, he makes it 100% his own. <laughs> right. Like um, the scenes, there's a few scenes where he's in the bar just like dancing in slow motion. And I bet that was kind of like one of those things where it's like we could literally just film you dancing along <laughs> to this music for hours. Oh, God. <laughs> we shot him for, we shot him dancing for an hour. And he was it, was, it was our last day of, of shooting. So we were all so excited and so happy and had been on such a journey. And it was our last day. And Bill just kept dancing and dancing and dancing. And we just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. Then when he saw the movie and he saw it was only like 30 seconds, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you shot me for two hours. He goes, yeah, you shot me for six hours. I go, well, no, we shot you for like an hour. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I got a few notes of uh, Hunter S. Thompson from Where the Buffalo Roam in that dance sequence as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was incredible. No, I really, yeah. As you can tell, I'm sure I really enjoyed the movie, and uh, it's really cool to get your your take on your experiences on the film. I was kind of curious about working with. Uh, I know that the cat in the movie was actually two cats. It seems like yes. I have I have a cat, and it, he's very fickle. It seems like it would be difficult to work with a cat, but this cat was like. Just sitting in laps and like chilling out. <laughs> a great cat. We had two cats. One of them was psychotic, <laughs> and one was not. The psychotic cat you never saw because it was psychotic, so we had to keep him in the cage. And the, so we only had to use one cat, and he was his name was Jasper. Mm -hmm. And Jasper was brilliant. I mean, his his owner was not brilliant, but Jasper <laughs> was brilliant. Uh, and thank God that Jasper was brilliant because Jasper really didn't want to be with his owner because his owner was like a very dim bulb. <laughs> yeah, it was, Emma, Emma fancied herself a cat trainer and she if she should take the trainer off that state and just call herself a cat lady. Uh, that would be more appropriate. But um, anyway, but the cat was just genius. The cat, the cat, I mean, the cat did some things that are, that, you know, that are not in the movie that are, we were just, floored by. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> just, a scene that got cut out of the movie, the cat runs across the, across the, the Vin's living room and jumps on a side table he had, like, he was passed out in a little corner, mm -hmm. and the, the cat jumps on the side table and sits there and sits down like a dog and stares at me and then meows. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and we, were like, we were like, I didn't know what to do. We were like, we were just floored. I can't so, ask for more. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh, the cat was, the cat was <laughs> you had mentioned earlier that you consider the movie, I mean, it's a drama. I called it like a comedy drama, but that was, I was having this weird experience at the movie because uh, I'm 29. I was probably 10 to 15 years younger than everyone at the theater at that time. It was like one o'clock on a Wednesday or whatever. You went to a Blu-ray special. Right, exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah. the old $5 deal, not... Nothing against you. Yeah. I'm just saying I only contributed five dollars to the cause. I apologize. <laughs> that's but, fine, that's fine. But I like it not I'm trying not to ruin too much, but he, in the course of the movie, Bill's character has some kind of medical condition. We'll just call it that. And the way he deals with it, like in the rehab process and stuff, it's funny. It's funny how like grumpy and angry he is. And I'm sitting there like laughing at it and these these older people are just like Stone cold silent, like they did not see the humor in it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? 
Not much. I'm going to sit there and laugh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? If you can't laugh at health, health is a funny thing. Health is a funny thing. And as you get older, you know, I, I'm now 40, and, and uh, you start to go, whoa, there is health. There, there actually are health issues. Uh, but when you're in your 20s and your 30s, you actually don't believe they're health issues. So that, it's probably tougher for an older audience to watch that because they for sure know someone who's had a stroke. And, then them, and I'm sure there's people who've had strokes that are watching it. I had a guy who had a stroke uh, came up to me the other night at a Q&A and said, I had a stroke last year. And he goes, I just want to say thank you. He goes, thank you for depicting it in an honest and, and, and you know, in an honest way, really. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Are you really, it's really accurate. It's really accurate. The, the rehab, everything is accurate. And he goes, and I appreciate it. That's like an yeah. un- unexpected sort of bonus to that, I suppose. My father-in-law had four strokes the year before. And Jeez. like I, I at one point, which they did, they'd make me laugh at one point because I'd go, dude, you can't kill this guy. Like the other guy's about. <laughs> how many strokes are you gonna have? I mean, how do you have four strokes? You just, you just don't die. It's like, <laughs> like a video game, and you have a stroke, and and then literally, literally, three weeks later, he'd be out of the hospital drinking a glass of Cabernet. Nice, smooth. <laughs> yeah, it's just unconventional. I would say normally in a film. It would go through this rehab thing, and it's either, you know, like it's like a lifting up sort of thing or showing how tough it is or whatever. But this is like a perfect mix, you know, like he's going at it, and his Vin has this like personality where he's just like, fuck, <laughs> you know, fuck it sort of thing. Yeah. So he just goes into it like that. And it's even the story, like uh, I'm, I had mentioned earlier when I was doing the review about a boy, like where, you know, a child and an adult male get together and like, the child changes the adult for better or whatever. But in this movie, it seems like Vincent isn't any different than he was like in the beginning of the film, kind of. You know, he's just, <laughs> he just does him. Well, you know, you know, it's hard to, I hear a lot of things. You know, you hear a lot of things. You hear a lot of reviewers. You hear a lot of, you know, saying, oh, it's, uh, we've seen this movie a million times. I haven't seen this movie once. So no. I don't really, I mean, yeah, oh, what, you've seen an old person with a young kid? No shit. No shit. Every movie has a young person and an old kid. Right. Um, have you seen uh, Spider-Man before? Every fucking superhero <laughs> movie is Spider-Man. Okay, so so they should be making that comment about every movie ever made because you haven't, you'll never see another movie that we haven't seen before. Exactly. At this point, you're not going to see another movie we haven't seen before. I mean, we've seen hundreds of Holocaust films, right? Oh, yeah. Nobody says, nobody says uh, I've seen this movie before. I've seen the, yes, you've seen the Holocaust movie. Why? Because it's important. It's important and it's interesting and it's beautiful. And the same thing with older, older, uh, an older man and a young kid learning from each other. It's beautiful. It's timeless. It's like, it's you know, about a boy. It's a great film. Um, uh, people are saying, someone said Uncle Buck. I said, well, what the fuck are you talking about, Uncle Buck? Yeah, was okay. <laughs> I, like, like the, some of the things that come up, you're like, what do you, what, what, where are you, what planet are you on that you can compare Saint Vincent to Uncle Buck? Right, I would say more like roommates with Peter Falk and D.B. Sweeney, but it's right. it's the way that the, like I said, like Bill Mur- like his character, you know, like kind of deals with it. <laughs> a lot of people, I guess in the, whatever, uh, in the types of movie, like About a Boy or something like these, the <laughs> the adults seem to be very reluctant to letting, you know, well, in this movie, we'll say specifically, Bill Murray's like, he's very reluctant to let this kid in. But even as he's, like, letting him in, he's not really kind of, you know, he's just, <laughs> he's just being his normal, like, asshole self. <laughs> but he felt... Yeah, he's not really letting, he's not really changing. He, he, he ch- change is incremental. You know, if you, the longer you live, the more you realize nothing really changes. It just kind of moves a little. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's all, yeah. Oh, yeah. This movie is great. I'm just going to throw it out there. I really loved it. So I'm going to suggest everyone go see it once again. But that should about wrap it up for the interview, unless you have anything to add, sir. No, no, just, uh, you know, thanks for spreading the word, and I hope everyone gets out there and takes a look at it, because at the end of the day, whether you whether you like a movie or not, your money speaks to what you support, and if you want movies that are for us, about regular people and not just explosions, then you got to go, you got to go support it. <laughs> and that's really what it's all about. Right, this is... Was in the third, third, fourth week of release. Uh, just because I noticed that it was kind of, it got like a smaller release, and then all of a sudden it was like, bam! Here's three thousand more theaters to open in. Yeah, so it's it's doing well. It's doing really well. 
and hopefully it just keeps going. Well, congratulations, definitely. And I wish you all the success because if your other movies are like this, then I would like you to continue doing what you're doing. <laughs> thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time, Ted. I appreciate it. And once again, that was director, producer, writer of St. Vincent, Ted Melfi, via the Procreate guest line. And like he said, even if you have like preconceived notions about what this movie is about, or, you know, oh, I've seen this type of movie or something or other, no. Go see St. Vincent, if anything, for the fact that it has Bill fucking Murray in it. I mean, he is like the main character in this movie. It's a different type of performance from the guy, I would say. He's not uh, the, you know, typical, lighthearted, uh, sarcastic Bill Murray that we all know and love. He's the uh, cold-hearted, weathered old man <laughs> who's dealing with life in his own particular way. So, go out, see St. Vincent. Thanks for checking out the Movie Buzz podcast. Find this episode and others like it over at teamprocreate.com, and we are under the Procast tab right next to our friends Pod on Pod, so check them out and check us out. You can also find us, share this link, like it, and listen via Facebook. We're Movie Buzz there. You can find us on Twitter at movie underscore buzzed. We've been way more active on Twitter lately, and that will also update you on the guests that we are having on and the movies that we will be watching. And finally, you can email the show moviebuzzed at gmail.com or moviebuzzed at teamprocreate.com. We love hearing from our listeners. Uh, we love engaging with everybody. It's kind of a fun communal thing. So feel free to comment on the individual episodes themselves on the website. Comment, send us messages on Facebook or Twitter. Go ahead and email the show. Uh, suggestions, whatever the fuck you want to talk about, I am open, ready, and willing, and able. All four things for you. So join us for the next episode of the Movie Buzz Podcast. It's time for Movie Buzz. It is time for Movie Buzz. Tell your mom, your sister, and your cousin. It's time for Movie Buzz. Here comes your host, Zach, carrying a six-pack. Come on over, enjoy the phone, it's time for me.